Okay, let's have a look at uh, verse 3. Um, it says, He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Let's look at this first part, restoring my soul. Whenever I hear the word restore, I think of a car being taken from its former condition, its old state, which is all rusted, and being renewed to its new state. And when we apply this to the Bible, it's almost thinking of how God has restored us back to the garden. We are restored through our body, soul and spirit through coming to Christ. We have to explain um, our genetic makeup to, in order to explain this. So remember, we are three part. We have a body, hands here. We have a soul, which is in us. That is our emotions, uh, our thoughts. And we have a spirit which has been united with Christ. It says that we have the mind of Christ in the Bible. We have a soul and our soul uh, is our thoughts. Our body helps interact with the world around us. And then our spirit is how we interact with God. So we can see we are this complex being. When we accept Christ, we, ha we gain a new spirit. We gain his spirit, his Holy Spirit, which is perfect within us. But our soul is still broken. Our soul is still getting caught up to being saved. The Bible says that we are saved and being saved. This saved part talks about our spirit, that when we have received Christ, we are saved. We are being sealed. Remember that verse. We have been sealed with the remark, with the mark of redemption is in Ephesians. But then our soul is catching up to that. So that's how we renew our mind. When we renew our mind, in other words, when we think about the things above, when we think about the things of Christ, we are telling our soul, this is what we believe. And we eventually catch up in our soul. And then our body follows afterwards. So that is a little bit about body, soul, spirit. I'm sure there's some more videos online if you want to uh, look into those about body, soul, spirit. Um, I can put a little link in the description explaining that a lot better than I did. But it says here that he um, restores our soul. He has already restored our spirit through accepting Christ in, into, our, into our lives as Lord and Saviour. But it says he's restoring our soul. And that is through the leading into the um, green pastures and the still waters. Because when we receive of him, when we drink of him, we are restoring our soul. Think of Adam and Eve. We are restoring our soul to how they were like in the garden. Beautiful. He cares about every part of us, doesn't he? He doesn't just say, mm, our body's crooked. I don't want to heal you. He cares about every part of us because he has fully redeemed us. He's redeemed every part of us, our body, soul and spirit. Let's have a look at the next bit. He leads us, leads me even in paths of righteousness for his namesake. That name path, that word path. Uh, if we look in the original language, the Hebrew, it means tracks. He leads us in tracks of righteousness. And I like to think it of how he has walked out that track before. Um, here is a picture of sheep eating grass from the side. We can see from this that they actually don't have this massive lush green field. The shepherd will walk along the hillside, leading the sheep to the best places where they can eat. Because remember in Israel, when this time was written, it was an arid, hot climate. It wasn't like in Britain where we've got lovely um, meadows, it's all nice and green. But no, that they had patches of grass. So as the sheep would walk along, they would eat a little bit of grass, then move along, eat and move along, eat and move along. And it's like um, fresh manna almost, isn't it? That God gave the children of Israel, just what they needed in the desert. And day by day, they went out to collect this manna from heaven, this, this heavenly substance that was given to them. And it's the same with us today. He gives us what we need for today. Not for tomorrow. He gives us what we need for today. He gives us the food we need for today. Remember the Lord's Prayer. Give us today our daily bread. It's the same way that he gives us what we need for today. So that's paths of righteousness. Um, another really interesting fact about the sheep is that if the sheep stay in the same field, if they stay in the same meadow, they will completely decimate the whole place. So they have to be led to a new field. They will erode the, um, the, the, the whole hillside. They will erode the place. It will look like a mess. So the shepherds had to continually lead the sheep to new places. So that's why it says about paths. He leads us on the right path. But 
here's a nice little um, uh, imagery that society almost boxes us in. We must be like this. We must conform to that. And through doing that, we erode ourselves. But this is not how we're being led. Society is leading us instead of Christ leading us. And it's almost like sick culture tries to lead us in a particular way. But that's just going to erode the landscape. I'm, I'm talking metaphorically here. But the, if we follow the Good Shepherd, he will lead us to where we need to go, not us. It's not by our strength, not by our understanding. It's through Christ and his leading. So that is through paths of righteousness. I remember asking, how do I know I'm on the right path? I remember God saying, is it producing righteousness? The path you are on will be right because it is producing righteousness. Because it says he leads me in paths of righteousness. Proverbs 16, in his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. It reminds me of that, how the Lord determines the path. He knows his steps, he knows the path we're going to take, and he's going to help guide us to that path of righteousness. So that is uh, verse 3, he restores my soul, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake.